Okay, so this is our second electrical ramble. It's my great pleasure to be joined by Craig Gifford of Gifford Electricals. Good evening, Craig. Good evening, Gaz. How are you? I'm very well. I'm trying to piece together some of these electrical rambles in these difficult times where obviously we're all stuck at home. And I'm trying to sort of run through an educational theme with it in the first first one that I didn't record much of and didn't salvage much of. <laughs> I spoke to a college lecturer up in Scunthorpe and about how he was coping with obviously uh, distance yep. learning. But you've got a story about how you got into the electrical industry that I think uh, I'd like to, if we can, share it with the people who watch my channel, because I get a lot of adults ask me, how do I get into the electrical industry? And obviously you took yeah. a certain journey to get in. Can you tell us about your background first, Craig? Yeah, so um, left school and I started um, working in 12 uh, very low voltage systems. So things like 12 and 24 volt systems, installations, designs, um, progressing into networking, um, so data networking, building those from first principles. Okay. Um, spent the last 10 years working for a, a rather well-known company, um, did my apprenticeship with them in telecommunications. Okay, so so this sounds already similar to what David Savory did. When he, when he spoke to me, he did something very similar to probably where your story is going to go. You've got that grounding in telecommunications then. Yes, yeah. Um, and as part of that telecommunications journey was a lot of work on low voltage systems, um, including battery backups, redundancies, and, uh, you know, circuit designs and things like that as well. Okay. Um, the last three, uh, sorry, the last uh, 18 months, so the last three years, sorry, yeah, I was a manager, managing a team of, uh, team of guys and wasn't really enjoying it um, till about six months before the end where things kind of took a bit of a, uh, a nasty turn um, so the company were restructuring and looking to take making voluntary redundancies okay. before doing compulsory so at which point I, I kind of had a chat with the wife we had a lot of personal stuff going on and we said it was in the best interest to, to leave could I just have a timeline here you've yep. got two children I believe under the age of five or five and younger Yes. Were they around at this moment in time that you're going to make this life changing decision? Yes, they were, because the, the decision was <clears> only <throat> um, done last year. So March last year was when I left my, um, you know, my job, my very secure job um, to actually look at retraining into the, you know, becoming a, um, a domestic electrician okay. and starting up my own business. So okay. Just, just so just, just take a pause there. So you, you've been given a, a certain amount of redundancy. You've spoken to yeah. the boss and she said, yes, we can have a go at this. So yeah. you're going fully in. Children are probably not quite at school yet. And you're going to go and work for yourself. Yeah. And you're going to do an intensive course. Is that what you ended up doing? Yes, it was. Um, now, it's a lot of pressure. It was a lot of pressure. Um, a lot of time away um, during, you know, um, while I was at the course of staying away from home so trying I had my little girl actually wasn't born yet so it was just uh it was actually just my son at that point um but he was he was missing me terribly and obviously I was missing the wife as well so yeah it was it was tough but we agreed that actually it was better in the long run because the job I was doing was having a detrimental effect on my health it was I was always working Right. always working um if the guys so, were working i was working you've turned yourself into an electrician don't we always work as well don't we are you saying you're working less now i well obviously if we take <laughs> if we ignore cv yeah i am because obviously i can pick and choose my hours retrospectively um you know i can work around the world wife you know she works part-time as well so if i if we can't get a sitter for the youngest then i can stay at home that's um, nice. It is. Uh, the job I was doing meant that um, when my guys were working, they would work anything from eight in the morning till seven at night, okay. Monday to Saturday, sometimes Sundays. And you'd be expected to be available whenever they're working. So actually, I often found I would leave the office at, say, three thirty, four o'clock and then I'd get home. And I'd immediately be on the laptop, the work phone, and it would just be nonstop. All right. So that prompted the change. 
yeah. and now you're throwing yourself with your practical skills so you've already done an apprenticeship so yeah. you've got all these practical skills maybe working in houses so i'd imagine the difficult things like fishing cables lifting floorboards all the things my students when they've done their course to become what i call a domestic installer or a domestic electrician um is that they'll ring me and they'll say well, i've got to get all the carpets all the floors and all yeah. the furniture in the way guys we didn't do any of this when we were training it's yeah. but you'd overcome that as such because uh, you'd had all that experience so you were just layering got, in some electrical yeah. knowledge and, and as you were yeah just just more updating the electrical knowledge right okay obviously there was there was knowledge there already from the the data network in the low voltage and all the you know separation of class one class two cables and things like that so there was it was the intensive course was to increase my knowledge base yeah um to ensure that i was doing the job you know in a safe and correct manner yeah. and you know as we know the blue book is the bible so yeah you know, well it, yeah. it'll be a different yeah, color for <laughs> so, so, so you're used to working with band one systems. You're now obviously working with band one and band two. And we've seen from your own house how you, you've still still keeping your handing on the IT systems that you've been pulling yeah. in, etc. Which I would imagine has made your, the electrical contracting company that you've now set up a little bit more adapt to the world that we're living in. So, smart technology yeah. doesn't bother you, does it? No, no. And you know, the time with um, so obviously I met um, one of our my favourite people actually is is a guy called Rich Heppel. It's one of my uh, favourite people as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, who I had the, the fortune and pleasure of meeting at one of the first uh, eFix live events. Yeah. So that was that was great. And you know, he was I'd seen him on Instagram and you know, I was so in awe of what he does. He's really changed my you know, my mindset about how to run cabling, what colours to use and things like that. Um, you know, when we were at the eFix I, you know, said to him, Look, can I can I come and spend some time on site with you? and get to see you firsthand how you do it and yeah so i spent two days up in leicester with him uh the next week and yeah any opportunity i get I've, I've, I've met up with him again at a few other efix events and um you know i think the invitation is there whenever he's in this when he whenever he's in the vicinity of where i am to join him on site and and get stuck in and i'd love to see so i saw the the first part the first fix running all the cables the next step i want to see is obviously you know the the second fix actually getting those lighting panels in and, and configuration of the um you know control force system because i think it's so, a fantastic thing he does yeah and i'd call that the third fix so first oh, fix yes, is all the yeah. cables second fix put all those expensive gadgets that he puts all over the place and yeah. then the third fix third being fix. actually getting control for to talk to everything so yeah I've, I've been fortunate enough to see one of his completed projects and i mean just it's a different was, world yeah this, the video that you and uh, you and joe did at the i mean that that customer allowing his home to be a show home effectively to he's done several of the videos yeah. yeah yeah so, so what i like about that is obviously lots of things there you've got an apprenticeship you've got some massive understanding of the industry that you're in you've developed and i know people will be shouting at the tv there's different ways of doing it you've taken not a short course because it was a quite a number of weeks in order to get yeah. the qualifications that you've got but then you've not rested on your laurels you, you even though you've got a background in uh communications and networking that you've gone off and worked with rich heppel which is great and we've seen you i think three live feed events i think if we had a stamp for the the loyalty yeah. card stamp i think you'd be working towards your dewalt cable staple of our now yeah you to five. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few other people come on too but i think you and yeah. tom now um you got quite friendly with tom and i've seen him in at least one of your videos that you had on your channel yeah how did that relationship work with tom so um Tom actually uh, followed me on on Instagram, and I'd been posting about how wonderful the the obviously e fix live event was, and that the next one uh, I'd be going to would you know I was going to go to Cheltenham and stuff. And he said, "Oh, brilliant! It, Cheltenham's not a million miles away from me. I mean, he, I think he's Coventry based or he's somewhere around that area. So, okay, it's not a million miles away." Right? Yeah. And uh, he he came and uh, I pulled into the car park and he said. He shouted across the car park in Cheltenham and he's going, Craig, Craig, I'm, I'm looking around. It's like, who's this guy? I just carry on walking. He says, Craig, it's Tom. Oh, 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 Tom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mind is blank because I'm, uh, I'm useless with names generally. Um, but yeah, so I met Tom. I actually met Tom through Instagram. He came in, I met him at um, eFix. And 
yeah, one day he, you know, he, he came and uh, said, look, I've got this project, a um, couple of days work at this, this old house, which had featured a few times on, on my YouTube channel. And he said, look, if you want to come, you're more than welcome. We've got some CCTV and some door entry stuff to fit. So you're more than welcome to come. And yeah, he came along and put in some good graft and bless him on the, on, I think it was the first day he actually hit a pothole. Or was that the second day? One, there was one day he so it cost him money. Strand, it, he got stranded at the house um, because he hit a pothole. Um, as we know, the, the roads are brilliant, and uh, yeah, is uh, I think it cracked a rim or something. So he got he got stuck at the house and w- had to wait for uh, the RAC to turn up to come and swap everything over. Um, so what what luck about that is you've probably done the rich apple in reverse someone's contacted you on social media yeah you've you've networked with him at an efix live feed event in this one in cheltenham um i think we've seen tom two or three times i think he's, he's he'll be crushing yeah. you on the loyalty card he'll be trying to get that d1 cable state but he was going to come to nottingham as well i think he'd have done another one um I know. So we Not, got, we got, nottingham was a little bit out my out my reach <laughs> but uh so and so you've returned a favour. So you've you've yeah. you've you know, allowed Tom to come along on that. And t- Tom's Tom's a nice nice guy. He's he's, he's, a, he's a really nice guy. And yeah, he knows nice the stuff as well. Um, you know, having having chatted with Tom, he's got he's knowledgeable. Um, and I know you know he's going to fit well in the industry when when he kind of moves over from what he's currently doing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good luck to him. Yeah, so so it, it's a small world. So we obviously got we, we're connecting with you. We've seen you a few times at Efix Live Feeds. We've seen Tom. We've got obviously the the, the legend that is uh, Mr. Heppel, um, yeah. bringing us all together. Really, I think he's taking other people on uh, for work experience as well from the live feed events. And I've actually said it on the mic before. If you stop and ask Rich at the end of this, he will allow yeah. you to come and work with him, which is good that he wants to pass on his knowledge, which is all about. So so you're working for yourself, okay? So you took that brave yep. step. You changed careers. You've got very small people running around and obviously a newborn at one point when you were in the middle of all this. And then you decide to start up a YouTube channel um, that actually did. Will, will then take you through your day. That is brave because it's brave enough for anyone to start showing their work. But yeah. in that position where you've actually retrained, now all of a sudden you've got potentially the world and his wife going to be chipping in with their own personal opinions. Yes. What made, what made you do it? Um, I kind of, I've obviously been watching a lot of other YouTubers for a long time, um, and I, it was just an excuse to buy a GoPro. <laughs> and what you got? Seven GoPro seven. I had a seven. I upgraded to an eight. Oh, you got an eight? Yeah, they're nice. They are. I'm still doing. Um, I'm, st- I'm still doing it on a phone. I'm still like any kit. No, Gary, no kit. I should start Gary a Patreon. Rogan. What is it? Crowdfunding, is it? Is yeah, that something? you could yeah. start. Yeah, or yeah. Patreon. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Gary, Gary um, needs something better than a phone. Gary so, needs some kit. So it, it wasn't obviously about buying a GoPro. Um, I I kind of did it because, I, you know, I, I enjoy doing it. I need, you know, I needed a hobby as well. So, you know, being a spark, I love that kind of aspect of problem solving as well. And I thought, well, you know, there are plenty of other people doing it. Is there anything, you know, maybe I won't bring anything different or maybe I will. And I find for my videos, I don't swear. You'll probably notice I don't swear in any of my videos whatsoever. Oh, and that's why you're child friendly for us at college. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah. But I'm a big potty mouth at home. <laughs> I don't swear anywhere. St. Gary. <laughs> Anyone who knows me now is falling into the set. Yeah. <laughs> um so yeah I, I kind of i thought i'll pick up a camera and i'll see what it's like and you know do some experiments and the th- you know it's a steep learning curve being a youtuber um <laughs> because the f- i think the first two videos i shot you know i was doing um doing um van racking for my van and i was filming it and for the most part it was all right and what i could see was obviously completely different to what the camera was picking up so obviously as the light was getting lower it was still plenty of daylight that I could work, but actually the camera was picking up next to nothing. And yeah, you, you, it's definitely a very steep learning curve. And actually, as as time goes on, I'm definitely getting better and better at um, producing content. And you know, the views are growing as well. I mean, you know, my latest video is, is surpassed the very the my last big video was the part one of the 300 year old house, and now the hot tub installation is kind of. It's surpassed that 
and the comments, you know, the, the thing about the comments is there are people who, who just are nasty and I delete those. Um, I'll block them as well. Yeah. Um, so I delete those, but there are people who will ask very engaging questions and I have to be honest with them. I don't know all the answers. Well, I can be honest with you. I get a lot of engaging questions. So I don't know all the answers. I've, I've been sitting there with a regs book at night when I first started the channel, yeah. trying to find people's answers for them. And I thought, yeah, I don't know everything. So, no. so fair play to you. I think that's, that's, that's brave. It's, it's a nice hobby to have. Um, anyone who's out there who's thinking of starting a YouTube channel, I would always suggest you start it up because you want to do it and you enjoy doing it. Don't start it for any other reason. So, yeah, you know, I know right. some co- college lecturers that are friends with, with me saying, well, we're going to now in, see uh, now we're all shut down. We're going to start producing some videos. I said, you make sure you do them because you want to do them and not because you think you can get somewhere because that doesn't yeah. happen all the time, does it? And the way the videos work, obviously, you you progress. I mean, I, I went back through your your back catalog the other day and you know the, so i went back to the very start the first you know three years ago terrible and, you know they, they but they were they were to the point and now obviously you know they you've got a bit glitz and glamour in there and a, a logo and things like that. B, they, they, they get better they get yeah. better don't they but, but i've never i've said this on plenty of them i'm not talking about me which will be but i've never watched a youtube video for a shot one I didn't have no idea. Oh, right. I was just idiot, complete idiot. Just on a gap. Yeah, just hold the iPad just there on my phone and I'll stand miles yeah. away and shout at you. That was about it. I mean, so I, go on, you go. I have had um, a couple of people come up to me and say, look, what, what do I need to do? What's the best guy? I mean, um, a new a new YouTuber, uh, Will, Will's Electrical Services. He's just um, he's just started, you know, been helping him. And, you know, he's he's I think with the YouTuber and the Instagram, it's really good to acknowledge other people if they've got involved. And he's one of these guys, you know, proper oi oi geezer type scenario. And he's a yeah, brilliant guy. And it's great to see him set up a channel doing what he wants to do as well. So yeah. kind yeah. of passing that on as well. Not that's that good. I'm a famous, you know, I'm not a famous YouTuber. Yeah, there's no such thing. We're electricians. That's all we are. Yeah, so, exactly. So, so there we go. So we've, we've changed career. We've got an electrician. We've now got a small family. We're providing for people. You've started your own YouTube channel up. I wouldn't imagine life could throw anything more at you. And then you obviously go to the hospital and you're diagnosed with something reasonably serious. What was that then, Craig? Yeah. So um, my wife kind of noticed um, a growth on my back and uh, went to the doctors and turned out to be um, stage two cancer. So... Yeah, that was that. No, that was a diagnosis just before Christmas as well. So that kind of just, you know, it was a bit, a bit tough. But we've been taking it. We've been taking it as it comes. And one of the things, uh, she's not going to in shot. She's not coming no, in. No, she doesn't want to come in shot, but she, she has to make a point of say it loud enough. I saved your life. Did you hear that? She, she saved my life. Yeah. Well, well, hats off yeah, to her. She did. Yeah, she yeah, did. Yeah. She did. Well, did you, not be nice. It, you know, it's your story, but. If it's on the back of your back and you're a bloke, you're never going to see it. So if you lived on your own, it would have been the size yeah. of a dinner plate, wouldn't it, before you realised you got it? Quite possibly, yeah. And um, so I had some surgery. Uh, when was the surgery? Uh, March. So so diagnosed in December and then uh, went and had consultations in between December and March, at which point we also had to move house as well. Why not? So why not? We'll throw that in the mix as well. Um, so I had some surgery on the 60s. It was just day surgery. And um, I say just, but, you know, you go under a general one. You know, there are always risks with, with surgery. And, yeah, I had um, I had the original um, surgical location reopened and they took out some additional tissue. Um, and then they also removed three lymph nodes, one under my left arm, two under my right um and they just got a letter today uh sadly which well, i say sadly they, they they basically confirmed that there is some additional material they don't know what it is it's indeterminate but there's some additional material in the lymph node so we're just waiting to hear now what will be the um you know what's the next steps whether whether we have additional surgery whether we go for chemo we don't know so yeah, it's, you know, the, for the next five years, I'm going to be closely monitored by the, the cancer specialists anyway. Okay. There is, however, 
there's always a, a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, and I don't with a wife. I get free prescriptions for the next five years. Oh, oh, that's, that's brilliant, isn't it? Brilliant. <laughs> really? Really? Okay, so, wow. Yeah. So, so, and we've had a little chat about it. We're not 100% clear yet, are we? So no, that's the, the, no, the, the so thing is, they're going to keep an eye on you. Yeah, so they'll keep an eye on me for the next five years, and we'll we'll see what comes from it. Um, they might do nothing about the growth because it's it's indeterminable, and it's it is literally less than a tenth of a millimeter. It's zero point zero eight in okay. millimeters. So it, it is tiny, but because it's that tiny, they can't tell whether it's just normal cell clusters or whether it's you know it's melanoma. Okay. So we shall we shall see, and we we we'll just take take it as it comes and deal with it as we need to deal with it okay well thank you for sharing that with us because obviously in, in, you know even even going to the hospital i would imagine at the minute people are finding it very difficult for anything they reckon yeah. any sort of diagnosis of things like you've talked about people are just not turning up so um yeah. it, it, interesting story there wow so that's, that's that's some journey that we've gone through so there's always one thing yeah. to end on and this is going to be one of those ones where i'm pleased to be ended do you like star wars no <laughs> Yes, you love yes, it. Yes, I do. I, I, I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. I don't know everything, but I do. I do enjoy the films, with the exception of one very terrible film. Don't say Episode One. <sighs> yeah, yeah, great. So. It, it was never made. It was never made. It was never made. They just went straight from two oh. to. Oh, two dear. to nine. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Just I love Rogue One though, so I love a remake. I love Rogue One. Oh, not a remake, a rehash one. So I love Rogue. So with that in mind, we're obviously in lockdown. We spoke to each other and we talked mm-hmm. about Disney Plus and the yeah. the need maybe to download a, a new uh, streaming service. And I said to you, you can get Mandalorian on there. Did you download it? Yes. And you're on episode what? Are you up to date? I think I think I'm up to date. So they're released on a Friday. So I'm, I'm I am up to the very very latest one. Um, it is definitely a series I could binge watch. So if they had all the all the episodes on at once, I could probably quite happily sit there. Do you know why they um, didn't do that? Because they don't want to. It's better to release they, them as they gave, they gave you a seven day free trial. If they left all oh, of the episodes on oh. there, people. Oh, we just well, take the free trial, wouldn't you? I, I didn't take the free trial. I, I paid the 50 quid up front. <laughs> just gone for it. <laughs> I've got for it. One of, one of my client mates let me have his um, email and password. I'm, I'm doing it on one of his extra accounts. So I'm in a good oh. position, bless him. The daughter. Well, I, think, I'm, I think you get yeah. 10. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, 10. Yeah. Oh, you wow. Get, you get really, 10. So that was nice of him. So what a journey then. So we're, we're, we're taking a different approach into the electrical industry and we're going to try through these uh, series of rambles to cover other college lecturers, uh, which we've already done, Ian Clark. We're going to cover other people's journeys into the electrical industry, as well as people I'm connected with as well. So, Craig, I really appreciate you giving us your time and being so frank and honest with us. And we hope you get well, just from the point Thank of you. view that wherever we are in the UK, you're likely to turn up for an fixed live feed event. So yeah, I can imagine stand, standing there in Edinburgh and you walk through the door. Edinburgh is Edinburgh is almost home from home. Um, family family are only about half an hour away from there, so Tom will turn know. up. Tom will turn up. <laughs> yeah, Tom will be there. He'll he sent me the map. He sent me the map last time. He said anything within a two hour window, I'm coming. It's like yeah, I can get to that one. I was like, really, Tom? <laughs> you must enjoy that. Okay, so we're going to try and end it um, in this timed on fashion. Uh, but the problem is with Skype is you're probably finding my lips aren't matching the, the audio yeah. track. Yeah. And when we try and do this bit, we get it all out of sync. So uh, we'll try and end it in the time honored fashion. Craig, right. thank you for uh, your electrical ramble with me. And we'd like to end it with, we hope this hope video, video has been, been some, some help. help.